If you haven't seen my last talk covering the entire Defender stack, so all of Microsoft 365 Defender, from start to finish, take a look at that link that I've put in the description below, and you can just see 10 demos in 55 minutes covering Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, Defender for Office, Defender for Cloud Apps. Didn't quite get to do Defender for Cloud, but we will get there at some point. For now, though, I want to cover web content filtering, because I started with that pretty much at the start of the video, and I really didn't have a lot of time to go into it in too much detail, so we're going to do it now. So let's head into the Defender portal. So from the Defender portal, if you... Well, let's go to the homepage. That's where you'll start normally. From here, if we scroll down to the bottom... I'll just expand this a little bit. Scroll down to the bottom. We have Settings. And in Settings, we have this array of different categories of settings that we can play around with. And we get different options here, depending on the products that you're licensed for and that you've got enabled within the tenant. So for example, I have endpoints right here, because I've got Defender for Endpoint in my environment. I've got email and collaboration because I've got Defender for Office. I've got identities because I've got Defender for Identity. So, and Cloud Apps, obviously, because I've got Defender for Cloud Apps. So these this will dynamically build as you get more and more capability within the tenant for now we're talking about endpoints and web content filtering so i'm going to click on endpoints and this is where you can configure everything around endpoints if you look at the features that i've got enabled we'll just scroll down there's loads of different features that we can enable and should probably enable in most environments so i want to scroll down till we find web content filtering it's not too far down there it is so as you can see, I don't want to read it for you, but essentially we do category-based web content filtering where we can actually say um, these categories of applications, you know, webs, websites, can't be accessed by this group of users. So that's kind of different to how traditional web content filtering behaves because web content filtering, in most cases, as far as I'm aware, would be you'd type in the URL that you want to block and it would give you the whole list of URLs that it's going to block. This is really a bit more basic, but a bit easier to use from my perspective. So we're going to block social media, for example, for call center users because they shouldn't really be doing social media while they're in the call center. So that kind of concept. So let's jump in and take a look. As you can see, I've enabled it. You need to enable it first before it'll work, right? So that's one of the prerequisites. The other thing you need to do is have a policy within the web content filtering section within Defender for Endpoint. And the next thing you need to do is make sure that your devices are enrolled in Defender for Endpoint. There's a couple of more uh, prerequis prerequisites that we'll go into in a few moments. So let's first go and check that we've got our device enrolled, right? So let's go and take a look at that. I check that by going back to home, just, just to start from there, and scroll down to devices. And I'm going to take a look at the device, which is VM1. Somewhere here, there it is, right at the bottom there. And we check if it's enrolled. No, not enrolled. That's an Intune concept. Onboarded into Defender for Endpoint by scrolling down here on the left hand side. And you can see it says onboarding status onboarded, right? Perfect. That means it's going to receive the policy that we deploy to it and actually take effect when it gets there. You can see also that this is in the call center computers group thing. Let's take a look at how we get that computer into the call center computers group. So on the left hand side again, just scroll down to settings again, over to endpoints and then scroll down, not far down, you'll see device groups. Click on that and you can see I've got some, well one group called call center computers and I've got another group called ungrouped devices and that's default. Right, I didn't create that, that just is there by default. And when you go in here, you can create a device group, give it a name. Let's say, for example, I'm going to add a computer group here called developers. And developers, in my experience, are treated slightly differently to call centers, for example. So, for example, uh, a call center, you'd really want to remediate all threats as soon as possible. So with, within the remediation section, for the call center, you'll have chosen full remediate threat automatically. You want to protect them instantly whenever a threat occurs. And you don't really care where the threat is happening because their call center devices are going to be fairly locked down. And if there's a threat on there, you want to get rid of it pretty quickly. But when it comes to developers, they're creating code normally. They're making things, they're 
they're potentially running scripts and, and stuff that could potentially be um, considered a threat, even though it's really not. And we trust those developers to protect their devices in their development environment slightly more than we trust the call centers to not pick up a virus from an email that they get from a customer, for example. So in some cases, you might want to do semi-automated response and require approval for all folders, or you might just want to do no automated response at all. So I'm going to choose no automated response for these guys. Go down. I'm just going to create this group based on the filters. So for example, I know that my dev computers start with dev dash. That's something that I know. Um, and I also know that they use um, Windows 10. So choose next. Now I know I don't have any devices that are exactly that combination of settings, so I won't preview, but you could click preview and see which devices are going to be picked up. But I'll just choose next. And now I can specify which users or technically admins can access this device group in order to do remediation, that kind of thing. So as you can see, there's if you, the, it actually starts at the bottom of the screen. I'm quite zoomed in though for this video. That's how I do my videos. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and you can see it says select an AD user group that should have access to this device group. So if you want to specify which users can have access to which group, then you can do that here. Let's choose submit and choose continue. And it says the developer's device group has been created. Perfect. So that's how we create a device group. If I choose apply changes, that'll go ahead and make those changes within the environment. And you can see I've got no devices in developers and I've got one device in computers, in call center computers. Perfect. So that's our device group configured now. And the reason we configured a device group is because I want to treat these devices differently when it comes to web content filtering. So let's finally go to web content filtering. I'm going to scroll down and choose web content filtering. And you can see I've got a web content filtering policy already called uh, restrict social media. Uh, I can't expand that by the looks of it. So we're just going to have to deal with the fact that it definitely says restrict social media and it's blocking specific categories. Let's jump into it. So it's blocking professional networking and social networking. And the selected machine groups that it's blocking on are call center computers. Now, you'd probably want to block more than just that. So, for example, if we go in and take a look at the things that we could block, you know, adult content. Certainly, there's no need for these guys to be looking at adult content when they're at work. Maybe they need to be downloading, but high bandwidth, you know, I doubt it. It's unlikely. Uh, all of these certainly uh, definitely need to be blocked from a call center perspective for most environments, to be honest. No one needs to be looking at weapons while they're at work. And leisure, you know, they might, you know, I can't even see a good reason that they'd be playing games or using chat features, maybe web-based email, you know, but even then probably not. Uh, and then this next one here, parked domains and newly registered domains. Parked, I doubt it, right? There's, it's unlikely that a call center call handler is going to need to visit a parked web, a park domain for, for whatever reason. Uh, newly registered though, it might be necessary for them to visit a website that has recently been created. You know, newly is like within three or six months or something like that. So it, it could be possible that they need to visit a website like that. But also that's how attackers will create dummy websites. So it is possible that, uh, this could be a threat. So we'll leave it as that. And if I choose next, and now you can see we've got a couple of machine groups available to us. We don't see developers because it hasn't quite finished creating that clearly, but we've got unassigned group and call center computers. Leave it as call center computers and we'll choose submit. So you can see with only a few clicks, I was able to specify that call centers should be protected pretty much unilaterally. They're going to have the best protection we've got from a web, web content filtering perspective, apart from web web based email and, and newly registered sites. So that's that done. Now let's head over to one of my call center computers. And let's see how long it takes to apply because I'm not going to edit this bit, this will actually be in real time. So I'm going to be a few seconds, but I'm just going to go over to his computer. So this is Alex on one of my call center computers. Now we already saw that um, LinkedIn will probably be blocked because that's a social media professional networking. And so I assume Facebook Dot com for example will be blocked as well um, now I need to figure out a website that will go um, and be not allowed what what did I block pretty much blocked everything um, 
that hasn't updated. Let's refresh that. All right, it's quite, it's quite hard to, find, to think of a, a website I could go to um, that would be blocked. But let's try. Um, Mintclip is a gaming website. So that's, you know, that seems to have worked. So clearly it hasn't applied just yet. Okay, so that doesn't seem to have applied at all in the past two or three minutes that I've been waiting. So I'm going to choose restart and see if a restart is required. I doubt it will be. But while that's happening, I want to just let you know about a new thing that I'm working on over the next few months, which is to create a cybersecurity academy. And that cybersecurity academy is going to have on demand and live training. And we're going to cover all of the different Defender for Endpoint and Defender for Identity, Defender for Office, all the different concepts of Microsoft cybersecurity within the Alpenshield Academy. Take a look at learn.alpenshield.io and I'll see you there. In the meantime, let's see if that machine has come back. And it has. Great. Just going to get into this. And what was it? Mini clip. I mean, I'm assuming mini clip is going to be blocked. Um, maybe not, though. Uh, what, what, what about Reddit? Is that social media? Maybe that's going to be blocked. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's that's blocked something, right? I mean, it, it, it does work. Let's take a look at what we can see from the reporting perspective. So I'm going to go to Defender for Endpoint again. Over on the left-hand side there, we've got the uh, menu. I'm going to scroll down and find Reports. So in Reports, we then can scroll down to Endpoint, and you've got this Web Protection Report. Really easy to get to. Click Web Protection. And you can see that we've got two malicious URL, two attempts to access malicious URLs. So this malicious URL, click into details and see what these are. These are probably a little bit of uh, time ago. Yeah, so we've got the demo smart screen website that I tried to go to. And, you know, this is the smart screen testing that I was doing in order during the, um, the live event that I did a few days ago. So scrolling down, we've got web activity by category. There's not a lot of activity in this environment at all, so it's not going to show us too much. But web activity, so web requests. There have been 20 websites that have been tried to to be accessed. Uh, 15 leisure, three legal liability, and two high bandwidth. So let's choose details there. See what information we can find out about these users. So social net, social networking. Um, let's take a look at that. Uh, TikTok, MySpace, Pinterest, and Facebook from this machine. And the policy that applied was a block for the restricted social media. That's good. Web-based email. Um, Office 365 was picked up. And it audited it from the restricted social media because it's not blocked. So that's good. Professional networking, I assume it's going to be LinkedIn. Yep, there you go. Uh, legal software. What did, I, what did I try and do from a legal software perspective? Uh, payrolltooling.com uh, don't remember what that was I assume it's some kind of um, I have no idea I think I was testing something there don't go to payrolltooling.com it seems like it's illegal software and download sites uh, trying to download Chrome okay good so that's the the information we get we can get from the categories go back into web protection just scroll down and we can see the blocks that are that have been taking effect here all of them so far have been leisure if we choose details there hit all of these ones here so the blocked ones uh, professional networking and um, and social networking it says illegal software wasn't blocked though but it was blocked here which is interesting. I mean, what is portal.payrolltooling.com? It's probably going to be blocked, isn't it? Okay. 
Doesn't appear to be anything at all. Nope. Okay. I don't quite understand why I went there or what it was doing. But, hey, it's done. Um, anyway, so the reports are pretty good and very easy to access. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see the, the entire list of domains that have been accessed. I can't... Can I? Yeah, I can extend, extend that. Uh, and really gives you an idea of what people are doing, what websites people are going to within their within your environment. I think it's really key, and it's all picked up through Defender for Endpoint. You don't need another agent on those devices to do this. It's all picked up through Defender for Endpoint. For what it's worth, it's also picked up if they're using Chrome or any of the other non-Edge uh, web browsers. So that is, uh, that's also picked up as well. It's all using the network detection feature, feature built into Defender for Endpoint. Okay, I hope that was a more relaxed uh, introduction to Defender for Endpoint web content filtering feature. I, as I say, I did like a 30 second demo of it during that live event a few, a few days ago, but I wanted to cover it in a bit more detail. I'm gonna cover the rest of those topics over the next few weeks as well. See you next time.